Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, like, um, uh, my name is Varun Dande. I'm from uh, University of Princeton. I'm a lecturer there. Um, this work was done by my collaborators in, in India, and they're from uh, IIIT Delhi, and also there is a uh, collaborator with um, an organization, a non profit organization called Tamanna, and they work uh, closely <coughs> with autistic individuals and kids, um, kids there. Um, so, the main motivation of our work is um, to, uh, to see or to explore if we can use extended reality for some procedural, procedural task training uh, for less privileged and um, autistic individuals. Now, when you say less privileged, they are less privileged in, in Indian standards. So, affordability is a big, um, a big issue there. So, I mean, majority of uh, the work that we are presenting today is uh, so we, we are not really uh, doing any high tech work, but it's more about exploring the technology that we have, a very basic augmented reality application that we have developed, but um, using those uh, with uh, the um, individuals <coughs> with autism or kids uh, from a background where they don't have a lot of exposure to technologies. So yeah, mainly we focused on um, kids with uh, from between nine to twelve years old, um, and like I said, they have very limited exposure to to technology, and they, none of them had uh, a computer at home. Um, and they some of them had uh, played games on smartphones, but that it's also not an iPhone or high-end Android. They're just very very cheap smartphones that can play some basic apps there. Um, so our so we have explored this AI-based training for. Um, for those groups, and we have performed two user studies that I will uh, briefly explain today. So, in terms of instruction modes, we had three different um, instruction modes. One is um, the augmented reality, and other one is just a desktop application. The second unit application will be the screen, and uh, also a very traditional face-to-face -face or, or in-person interaction or, or um, instructions. So, the as you can see in this image, the AR app is very, very basic. We use a webcam and some position markers and created those genogram puzzles uh, with those markers. And um, yeah, when they detected, they, they provided some kind of um, from instructions or where to put that, that marker in the, on the screen in front. Right? So, so it's very, very uh, basic AR application that we could develop in a day or even less. Right, so this is a rough architecture of the system that results are in the paper, but it's very basic. So what happens is, yeah, when people use, uh, when, when uh, anybody will um, use that camera puzzles and the camera detects it, and it'll show a particular orientation of where the camera puzzle should go in that particular shape, and we had different shapes uh, in the study, but in this example, and then the user had to um, sort of find how to orient the puzzle that they're, piece that they're holding in their hand and place it, and that went for until the, all the pieces are placed properly. Now, uh, that's the desktop system. It's again, um, quite quite basic thing. So um, they had all these puzzle pieces around, and the shape was shown when the selected puzzle pieces were shown that you have to place it there. And, um, and users could easily manipulate that. <laughs> and in-person um, or mode is very, we all understand what it is. Um, so that these are the main three things, and that's the most common way of instructing the kids and also um, the people with autism in this particular um, in this particular community, right? Um, so we the first study we did with uh, with the children. Um, again, they had there were um, twelve children, and we had two different um, uh, independent variables. One was uh, the instruction mode, like that we described just now, and another one. It's difficulty, so we had two different levels of difficulty, um, easy and hard, and in easy task, we had seven pieces of the puzzle, and in the hard one, we had nine pieces of the puzzle. And they had to do, uh, first, they had to um, do that with the instructions, and then there was a break for five minutes, and they had to, again, place the spot or solve the puzzle by themselves without any instructions. So we just wanted to see how much did they learn by getting exposed to particular instruction modes. And things were counterbalanced. Um, so, dependent variables wise, we collected their training time. Uh, we allowed them to train for as long as they wanted until they solve the puzzle or the puzzle is finished, and no matter how long it takes. And then um, they had to solve it within five minutes. So, we did a pilot study and we found that 
if we don't any restrict them on the time, then they will go on forever. It takes a long time, so we restrict the time. And then, um, of course, we collected the correct placements uh, if they didn't finish, finish everything on time. And we have some questionnaires. Uh, yeah, we have 12 participants who are uh, equally divided between male and female. Right, so we had a few hypotheses. Uh, the first one was we thought um, the children will um, uh, are used to in-person um, mode, so they will require less training time in this, partic this particular mode um, compared to other tumors because they are not exposed to that as much. And um, that was accepted, like you can see in this graph, uh, in-person mode has the least uh, training time. And also AR performed really well, quite close to the in-person time, but um, the desktop um, application was a bit difficult for them and one of the reasons that we found it was difficult that um, they were interacting uh, using the trackpad of the laptop um, and they are not used to this so it, it was um, and they're not used to mouse either so we might have received a different, and yet have got a different number if we had used mouse but um, again they are, they are totally um, um, noticed in terms of this kind of interaction so that might have caused this effect um, so AR-based mode, uh, the second hypothesis was AR-based mode will have shorter solve time uh, than desktop-based mode because they could like interact with the physical piece in their hand. And again, that was accepted as well. But we also found that in-person mode was also better than um, the desktop mode. And if you look at the graph on the desktop mode and the hard one, uh, they couldn't finish it on time mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. right, so they took entire five minutes, but they couldn't finish um, on time. So. Again, AR mode worked better than desktop. And the third hypothesis was, for the same reason, desktop mode will have least correct placements, which was, again, um, again um, accepted. But again, we found similar results between AR and, um, and in-person mode here. The okay, fourth hypothesis uh, was uh, that in-person mode will be less preferred. Um, because uh, we, we expected that the other two modes will have uh, more fun factor attached to them and they're interested in the technology that they didn't have, they haven't done before. But what we found was, uh, um, yeah, it was not, not accepted. So they really liked the uh, in-person <laughs> mode better. Uh, probably it's because uh, they're kids and they're used to their instructors and their, their teachers there. So they work better with, um, uh, with them. Although in this particular um, study, the instruction was provided by the experimenters, which was not their usual instructor, um, one of the uh, authors were, were there and instructing them. And the last hypothesis that we had was uh, for all quantitative uh, variables, difficult puzzles will have uh, a negative effect compared to easy puzzles. Um, but we did not find um, that uh, that effect either, except for one condition where uh, for, for the desktop best, best condition, but otherwise it was quite similar, or at least not significantly different. Right, so that was our first study. And then uh, learning these uh, lessons, we went on to a second study where we used the AR-based mode with autistic individuals. Now, um, we could not really do the study uh, or, or do the entire study with them, but we are rather focused on um, finding out how, if they are given this AR tool, how they will use it, um, or their acceptance and, and things like that. Uh, so we uh, recruited five participants there. All of them were diagnosed with, um, with autism's, um, autism, but two of them were uh, had Down syndrome and three had some uh, very mild mental, mental retardation as well. So again, the, the task was the same. Uh, for They had to just go through the, the mode and solve the puzzle by themselves, but we created six different um, puzzles of two different difficulty levels, so basically three um, different puzzles for each difficulty level. Um, and uh, so again, they also come from very uh, low and middle income families. Now for the easy uh, and, and hard uh, tasks here, we had to slightly modify it after talking to the people in, at the school. Um, so um, we had in this case five tangram pieces for the easy task and seven for um, the hard task. And, um, and then every day, and, and because there are three like, um, modes that they had to um, go through, so it, uh, they did it over um, like three uh, days, so they could not, because it, it, it would be too much for them to do everything on the same day like the other kids were able to do. So we had to do it over three days. Um, and in each day, they, they solved um, like six puzzles. 
Right, and what we found was uh, that the AR mode took the longest um, in, in the training, that's just, just training, um, whereas they did really well with uh, in-person mode. And in this particular case, the, the in-person mode instructions were given by their instructor who they're uh, used to or accustomed to. Right, and, and the, basically the reason um, uh, is, uh, or, or what, what uh, we, are, we think is, it is that they were using um, augmented reality, of course, for the first time, and also they had uh, have to really reorient this, um, these puzzles by themselves, which turned out to be like, difficult to operate with the physical puzzles or physical pieces. Right, so another thing we noticed during that uh, task that they needed encouragement. It's like we also kids need encouragement as well, but they also need a lot of encouragement throughout the, the task. Right, so that's something um, a good thing to learn from this exercise. So um, the insights that we have gathered is uh, our traditional approach of designing AR applications uh, for neurotypical uh, people or even kids will not hold true for autistic individuals. So we need to have different kind of design thinking there. And uh, one very important thing is like uh, they need the presence of their instructor. So uh, so that was um, something we learned from the, um, the study, but also we also the teacher told us that normally that's the case. So they always need the person who they are accustomed to along besides them to be able to perform some tasks, right? And um, so that's something we would like to explore uh, in future work that if we can create some remote presence of instructor or caregiver through extended reality and will that help um, if the caregiver cannot be present on site for some reason, right? And, and also they also needed a lot of encouragement that has to be somehow um, incorporated into the system as well. Right, so the future work uh, we would like to do is uh, for uh, the neurotypical children to see whether this kind of um, different instruction, instruction modes have any uh, effect on their cognitive load mm -hmm. or emotion. Right, and also we would like to um, uh, explore uh, opportunities for um, adaptive intelligent tutoring systems for them, but using um, <coughs> low-cost solutions um, that that is more affordable for the population we are targeting, right? So first part is research challenge, but second part is more about the engineering challenge. Hopefully, uh, in the coming years, we'll be able to achieve that um, uh, with, uh, a bit more easily. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what I had to say for the paper. And before I finish, I'd like to um, invite you all to this demo day that we're organizing on the 21st of, uh, of November. It's in the University of Queensland St. Lucia campus, which is a very beautiful campus. And we are going to show a few um, a few demos there, and we'll have some uh, some drinks and canopy to go with that, so you can enjoy it a bit more. Um, so yeah, we you can go to the Secret Asia's um, uh, website, and there we have this in the post um, conference to uh, register. So please register, and, and I would love to see you there. Thank you very much. Thank you.